Hi, George here. Welcome to the first video in the uh, interactive dinosaur skeleton series for virtual reality. Uh, here we're going to specifically talk about the 3D modeling of the skeleton. I have Maya LT loaded up behind me. We're going to go in there and look at some of the more interesting things we had to deal with uh, because this is an interactive demonstration, um, as well as um, this won't be a video really on 3D modeling itself. I'm assuming you have some understanding of the basics there. What we're really going to cover are just some of the interesting things we had to deal with in this project. In this project, I used Maya LT for modeling the actual skeleton. Uh, everything was modeled off reference images, just sort of found off Google image searches. Um, not all of them the best in the world, but you know, for the most part, they worked pretty good. Uh, the skeleton itself, the only part that we didn't model ourselves in this case was the, the, the skull and the jaw of the T-Rex. Uh, those were acquired off Thingiverse.com. They have a really wonderful T-Rex skeleton there. Um, but the problem is the topology was absolutely horrible. So towards the end of this video, we're actually going to go ahead and discuss that problem. But um, what we're going to do now, basically, is uh, jump into Maya. This is the final skeleton that was created. We'll notice some okay topology across the entire thing. Uh, it's already been smoothed, so there's no other polygon levels to actually take a look at, no sub-D surfaces that we're dealing with at the moment. But let's take a look at what we actually started with uh, with this project. So if we go to Open Scene, we're going to go and look for, let's see, Skeleton T-Rex. Don't save, please. And here's the start. So you'll notice you can actually find these reference images on Google pretty easily. Um, this one was great as a side shot. Uh, the bottom, though, we found I found a skeleton online someplace. And uh, basically, just started off with the um, vertebra on this back uh, towards the tail. And what you'll notice is that these are all, of course, subdivisional surfaces. So they're just polygon meshes. If you hit the one key, you see them as they are right there. If I hit the three key, we get to see their final smooth approximation. And basically, you just copy these bones all the way down and uh, tweak the, you know, the basically these top parts uh, as you see fit. So as you get further down, you'll notice the shape does change a little bit. And now the ribs, though, were a little bit different. So for these ribs here, you'll notice basically uh, if you, we take a look at the actual polygon mesh itself, not a whole lot is going on here. Um, very simple extrusions from a box shape and then just duplicated and then just tweaking the vertices using, um, in this particular case, uh, what is it called, soft selection to go in there and move them together at the same time. That's it for the, for the bones uh, in those regions. So the next part is, let's go to T-Rex 02, don't save. And we'll notice I've taken that much further. Here is the copy and paste, as I mentioned before, and all we're really doing is keeping the same structure, but drastically distorting the underlying bones. I'm really, I really don't care what that initial polygon mesh looks like. I only care what the final smooth approximation looks like. Same thing for down here. Um, we just kept duplicating it. At this time, I was not sure what bones I was actually going to be using. Let's go to the next step. Don't save, please. Move on. And here we are. So much more has been completed in part three. I uh, went to Thingiverse and I found this wonderful mesh over here. I can't select it because I have it as a reference layer at the moment. Um, but uh, I actually found uh, an entire T-Rex mesh that I used as a basis for what I was doing. So that's the much higher detailed versions in the back. Um, compared to my softer ones in the front. But at this point, I had modeled out the, uh, the pelvis and the leg as well, using that 3D model as reference to help me out, and uh, extended the spine all the way down to the back. Now, I'm not going to keep this incredibly high-resolution version, uh, because if we take a look, let's go to shading wireframe on shaded. Take a look at these, these meshes right here. This is not something I want to bring into Unity. Uh, first of all, there's far, many, far, far, far too many vertices and points to deal with, and the topology is absolutely horrible. If we decided for some reason to do texture this or to do something else with it uh, in the standard ways, um, not using um, you know, Unity or Mudbox, or not Unity, um, ZBrush or Mudbox to do the texturing for us, this would be an absolute nightmare to deal with. And I also wanted to keep the poly count you know, somewhat low, um, or at least within a, a range that makes sense. So that's why I did not use these assets as they are. So let's go into the next scene, 04. Don't save. And what we'll end up with here is now you can actually see my portion next to the, uh, the imported portion, and it works out pretty well. Uh, pretty much for these, you just duplicate them and uh, tweak the bones, especially up here towards the 
to, to the neck area, you'll see I drastically changed kind of how the bones are actually positioned right there. No problems there. And off to, what were we on? Four, now up to five. So here in five, uh, I went ahead and created the pelvic region or the sternum, I guess that is, as well as the arm, once again, using, actually, I believe I was lazy and I took the leg, duplicated it, flipped it in reverse. Yep, that's exactly what I did. I uh, duplicated this leg, flipped it around, and put it in here, most likely just rotating it around, not even bothering to mirror the thing. And then I believe I also took the, bo the foot segments and then just pasted that on there as well. Um, so for those of you who are big uh, anatomy buffs of Tyrannosaurus, I'm sure I screwed that up horribly. But for a first grader's demonstration, this should be just fine. Moving along, five, let's go to six, don't save. Come on, there we are. So this is when I finally started uh, considering modeling the T-Rex head, and I just started boxing the mesh out when I just basically thought to myself, I remember a ZBrush tutorial somewhere where they allowed me to retopologize the mesh. And uh, that's basically what I ended up doing was just um, exporting out this mesh. Uh, ooh, faces are on, mod display, uh, polygons, and turn face centers off. And uh, I exported out both objects. Um, this was a little bit tricky because in Maya LT for the Steam edition that I have, um, I have a restriction on the number of polys I can export out. I think it's something like 100,000, and obviously these exceed that, that quantity. Um, so I actually had to, to, poly, to reduce these meshes, and luckily they were, well, wet, relatively clean. Um, not too much was wrong with them. Uh, and then I brought them in the ZBrush, and what I'll do now is probably cut to ZBrush and show you a quick segment of the retopologizing. Re hmm, how would I say that? Anyway, the, the new topology for that particular 3D model. Let's jump ahead to most likely to when I'd already done this. So let's go to scaled. And nope, still haven't done this. But actually what I had started doing was I had a pretty good sense of the bones I was going to be slicing up and bringing out of here. So I took some of them, such as the verts up here, the rib uh, back here on the back side. And I began experimenting with slicing these in half and then seeing about making them hollow in inside. Um, to reduce the amount of print time, but not really that much print time. Uh, slicing them in half and leaving the inside solid as well to make it easier for me to bind these together. And then basically just, just moving through the different bone segments, trying to figure out how I was going to print these things. So let's go ahead now and jump to eight. Um, now let's just jump to nine. Yeah, we'll go straight to nine. Nine should have everything I want. So here in 9, uh, you can see the, the retopology has taken place of the T-Rex skull. ZBrush does some absolutely amazing things with a single button click. Here, both the top and bottom uh, have a significant amount of the original detail. Just a little bit of problems here on the teeth. But really, it's fine. The, the, the topology is amazing. Um, I forgot to remove this little clip part from the model itself when I did this, but oh well. So let's jump ahead into the last segment. So let's do 11. So here it is, the final mesh. You've seen this already before. Now, in Unity, uh, I, I wanted... Well, the VR system we have is curved. And I didn't want these things to be flat and straight. I needed two of them on the screen. So what I ended up doing was creating a whole new scene called Dirt Skeleton Full. And Dirt Skeleton Full had uh, the skeletons, basically, both of them. I duplicated the skeleton and mirrored it across the axis and froze the transforms. And let's get out of x-ray mode here. There we are. And uh, you see the cylinder behind us. Well, this cylinder is actually going to be the... Uh, backdrop for the world. I wanted something, you know, dirt and, and so forth, as if they were kind of still embedded in the bedrock. Problems that I ran into. The big problem was I used the bend tool on the T-Rex. So the T-Rex is in itself inside a large group, as we can see right here. Actually, maybe I can find the version of this scene that still has that. So let's go to Dinosaur Skeleton Full 1. And in Dinosaur Skeleton Full 1, we still have the bend tool. So in this case, the bend tool was applied to the group itself. But you run into a problem with that. So if we go down to the inputs here, and I, I can, of course, continue to adjust the curvature. But if we take a look at these objects and look at what's happening here, you'll notice that the pivot point of that object does not change with the bend shape. And uh, the next part of this video, I'm going to actually discuss 
how you have to edit these pivots and get them into the right place.